Take the Pitch is brought to you by MyEG in collaboration with Easy by RHB. Last week's episode, Jay Menon and Muhammad Anas successfully convinced the judges and investors and received 5,000 ringgit seat money to move on to the next round. Now, a total of five entrepreneurs are in the running to grab the investment of up to half a million ringgit. This week, will the numbers increase or will it remain at only five? Three entrepreneurs will stand in front of the panel of judges and investors to pitch their business ideas. And the judges for today are Shaiful Bahari Shamlan, Vice President, Digital Economy Enablement, MDEX in Rambarhan. Dato Dr. Nora Isa, Executive Chairman, MyEG Services Berhad. Nazrin Hassan, CEO of Cradle Fund, Sunil Berhad. Afzal Abdul Rahim, CEO Time.com. These are the judges and investors who are given the authority to write the destinies of our three entrepreneurs tonight. Will they go home with joy and success or empty handed? All these will be answered tonight. I'm Nazrul Idrus and welcome to the Pitching Arena where budding entrepreneurs will come in, take center stage and convince the judges and investors for their much needed cash injection into their business. These investors are willing to part with up to half a million ringgit but only the best will succeed. These nervous entrepreneurs will go through a grilling session before they can walk away with that all-important business deal. It is a make or break for these entrepreneurs. So let's watch them make the pitch. The first entrepreneur for tonight is Captain Said Nasi al -Sagoff. He used to be with the army and now a lecturer at University Pertahanan Malaysia and his dream is to invent a device to help fellow Malaysians. I am uh, Captain Said Nasir Al-Sagaf Ben Said Zakaria, retired. I am uh, currently a senior lecturer at Universiti Pertahanan National Malaysia. Based on my research and development at Universiti Pertahanan National Malaysia, I have came up with several products related to defence and security and safety. And that is the product which I am pitching for this competition. And then from there, I came up with the idea to prevent missing children. Uh, there's been several reports of missing children here in Malaysia. One of the major cases was that this one girl went missing and then was found dead. My son is the same age of the girl that was taken. So whenever I go out with my wife and child, my wife gets very nervous. Of course, as a mother, I'm very nervous. So definitely when we go out, I do keep very, very tight eye on him. And I do worry about him at the same time. And because she gets worried, I get worried also. And I think at that point of time we were talking and we were saying that perhaps it would be good if we could have something similar to find not just lost people but lost children. So from there, I developed a system to prevent missing children. I told my wife that I have developed the system and for testing, our son can use it. At least if we go out, if anything happens to him, the system will trigger and alert us said that our son has left the area and it will track my son where he goes. Come, give me your phone. Okay. Let me just configure the phone. Yeah, he's still in 
this area. Yeah, 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 sun is here. I feel safer with this system with me. If anybody takes me, my father will know. Don't worry, me. I'll be okay. My target is for that every parent that have a child that is concerned for the child will have the system. Not just here in Malaysia, but all over the world. Assalamualaikum and good evening. Sorry. I am uh, Captain Sena Sia Sagaf, uh, retired, and this is my son, Syed Uzam. Hi. Uh, as we can see from the uh, trailer just now, I've come up with a system that allows for a parent to basically specify a safe area for the child. And if the child is taken out from the area, the parents would know. And the system can keep track of the child. The system does not use GPS system because of the problem with GPS. And actually, my son is actually using the system just now. Show the phone, please. Okay. Yep. Yes. Anybody takes him with his phone, I can really know through SMS and I can keep track of him. I'm actually asking for 496,500 ringgit to basically kickstart this business. Yeah, what is your revenue model? <clears throat> okay, my is it revenue right, model. Right sale of the product or is uh, tied up with a service provider? No, it's, yeah, it's not tied up with a <coughs> service provider. Mm. Currently, I'll be offering the, the software only. If they we install for them, it's 50 ringgit. Mm. If they download, it's free. But I can also off, offer the phone plus software for 100 ringgit. Mm. And then the other revenue will come from the tracking itself. Mm. We will monitor the child for the parents. Uh, that will come to about 49 ringgit and 95 cents per month. Okay, the phone by itself is a very attractive thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, someone would just grab the phone, not your child perhaps, the phone. So, you'll be actually tracking the thief rather than your child. Okay, actually, let's say if you have a daughter or son, probably your daughter will probably have the phone inside the, the handbag. You can see. And then your son probably has in the pocket. Mm -hmm. You can see. So let's say if somebody grabs your son or daughter, they just grab everything, bundle inside the car. Then once they reach the place, that's when you see the phone. But they only see just a normal phone, but, but the thing is still tracking them. It depends on the coverage, isn't it? If there's uh, no it coverage still depends on the coverage, certain yes. instance, there's, there's no point also, isn't it? Yes. The judges feel that his device may not work in certain places, but Captain Side has the answer to it. Basically, the only alternative in the market is using a GPS bracelet. But the problem is GPS bracelet because of coverage also. Under the building, it cannot, it won't be able to track. I My think you're slightly mistaken there, Captain. I think there are several alternatives in the market. Yes. If you start looking at other tracking systems, whether it's a proprietary Nokia system or even using Google Communities, there's many ways you can track people there. So I think yes, yes. that statement about being the only alternative being a GPS bracelet is rather erroneous. Uh, but that, that market is for other market, but this is for tracking child. Mm. Uh, this is for my Arguably, those systems can do the, exactly the same thing. Yes, they can. Is, is this a... Uh... But, but uh, uh, let me just answer that one. Yeah. But for, the one, the, for that one, I want my system to be as easy as possible for the parents to use. All the parents have to do is basically come to the area and just do a scan. That's it. They do not know, they, they do, do know about the area or anything like that. That's all. Does it work on only certain phones or is it available across all platforms? Uh, currently, I'm working on Windows Mobile, but mm -hmm. I'll be converting it to under CBN and Android. On the location placement is this via base station triangulation uh, how accurate is it yeah using uh, we, a cell, cell tower about, triangulation when uh, we saw your uh, uh, preview that is he's within the area it doesn't sound too convincing no, within the, the area you know it can be at any area basically we want the parents to be able to set a safe area let's say to go to a shopping center mm. the parent can set the, the whole of the shopping center as a safe area if somebody takes a child then the parent would know captain Syed answered the questions calmly but can he answer this next question too? But if you were like in Mid Valley, there's a north wing, west wing, it's uh, you know, very far. So he's in the area. How do you know whether to go this way or to go that way? Okay. So that's what, that's what, what I would sell the product if you can say that I know where my child is within 10 meters. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for that, for that one, okay. For let's say a big place, one of the services which we will be offering for that 50, uh, 49 95 we can give. Uh, let's say the parent wants to go to Mid Valley, so we can actually give them the data for Mid Valley itself. 
Just to ask one more question, yes. um, Captain. I mean, uh, please don't get me wrong. I think what you're doing is very admirable. Thank However, you. we're here. This is a, this is not about. This is not an admirable project competition. This is a this is a pitch competition. Yes. And so thus we have to go through your 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 plans in in, in detail. Yeah. The question here is, assuming you put this all together, how will you distribute the software to the parents that wanted to subscribe? Okay, many ways. They can come to a physical place. They can download the software. Mm -hmm. We can even go to the telco companies. Basically, we provide, let's say, for new customers, or they can even contact the customers for that. And you think that forty-nine ninety-five a month is a a Should price be. point that will work for subscribers? Well, I would say, I mean, you cannot put a value on the life of a child. So I would say 49 and 5. Assuming the system is effective and works and can prevent kidnappings, yes. you can't put the value. But considering that at this point in time it's semi experimental, do you think 49.95 is the right price to introduce it to? Okay. Uh, now the pitch is becoming more and more tense. Judges and investors are probing him further. Will he be able to answer these questions? Stay tuned. Before the break, we see how Captain Syed wrestled with the questions given. Now, let's take a look on what's going to happen next. I mean, you cannot put a value on the life of a child. So I would say 49 and 5. Assuming the system is effective and works and can prevent kidnappings, yes. you can't put the value. But considering that at this point in time, it's semi-experimental, do you think 49.95 is the right price to introduce it to? Okay. Uh, I mean, the, the thing is, based on the profit margin, mm -hmm. based on, let's say, we have 6,000 subscribers for the first year, the net profit will be about 1.7 million based on 49.95 but the thing is we can lower it even more but still get profit also <laughs> the first thing that i would do is get rid of the mobile phone yeah, yeah. if yeah. i was mm -hmm. uh, if i was not a very clever child kidnapper perhaps but if i'm in the business of kidnapping children i would throw away the mobile phone first so the problem that i have with your idea is that it's actually mobile phone dependent mm -hmm. it's not it's not uh, uh, it's not hidden, it's not a part of their jewellery, it's not the, uh, maybe part of their Game Boy or, or something like that way. It's, it's a bit more hidden. You know? But with the phone, that's the first thing that you want to throw away because that's the access between them and the parents. Especially so your product becomes the fact popular. that you're parking it there, <coughs> I, I yeah, think I, it fails I, I, I on a concept answer, basis. Yeah, I can answer that also. Yeah. There are also mobile phones that look like a watch, that looks like a toy and so on. Actually, if I have my slides, I have several of the, uh, the, the mobile phones that look like a toy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The judges are satisfied with the answers given by the captain. However, will he make it to the next round? Uh, it's a relief to be able to basically present what I need to present. And I think I got all my points across. I think they were interested. Whatever came out is to the best of my ability. I don't think I can change anything more. And it's done and over with. And just hope for the best. Technically, based there, there were some conflicts when we were discussing with the judges just now. But I expect those questions. And I've counter with what the results, uh, findings that I've came up with. Inshallah, uh, I think I sh we should be able to get to the next stage because my product is different from everybody else. Next up, Vijay Kumari from Penang wants to build her curry empire in the local market. Will Vijay's dream to introduce Palita curry locally be successful? Hi, I'm Debbie Vijaya, the founder of Terra Harvest Foods Delicious in Rambrahat. I started this in year 2004. Before I started this manufacturing, I was actually involved in a industrial trading. I was badly hit by the recession in 97, and it took me seven years to lift my head. In 2004, my husband told me that there is some halal seminar going on in Penang, and why not you take up something to see whether you can lift up something from there. When she went for the exhibition, and she came up and told me that uh, there's a, a wide scope open for halal food internationally and locally. And I said to my husband, why not we uh, try up something in uh, halal food? I told her we don't have any funds. Since I got some wedding jewellery, you know, I said, why don't we put this is the last game that we're going to go in? And I said, okay, we put in our jewellery and we managed to raise some capital. We, what we have, the small fund, we try to build up again a new business. We realised that actually we have something in common. My husband was doing some trading during during his early 80s before we got married, something to do with curry powder. And that's where I said, look, since 80s you have been doing some trading, food trading like curry powder and some, some not, why not we put our hands together and see whether we can do something with it. He agreed with it and then we put our hands together and um, we went all out by buying the curry powder and we used to label it 